Hello, hey welcome guys. back. Bienvenidos para atrás. Otra vez, si apenas nos estás escuchando, yo soy Raúl. I'm, I'm Victoria. Oh, sorry. I'm Alfredo. Sorry, we go in a weird order. <laughs> yeah, we're Mr. And I'm Jalissa. And we're Fargo Youth Ministry! Yeah. So, we are excited because, one, we get to chat on the radio with you guys about our favorite character, our favorite best friend, which is Jesus. And Jesus had a couple of people that he, you know, he talked to, that he, uh, that he um, spoke through. And this month's leader, we're going to talk about... Drum roll. Ooh, Samuel. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. He's stolen. Dang. <laughs> wow. It's too long of a Samuel. pause. Samuel. Uh, hoy uh, vamos a hablar de Samuel. Es nuestro líder del mes. Um, estamos bien uh, orgullosos. Proud. Para hablar de Samuel. Y como él fue un gran líder. Y las cosas nada más que hizo él. Um, con Dios adentro de Samuel y qué pudo hacer en su vida y por qué es importante um, las cualidades que él hizo como un líder. So, Victoria, I'm going to hand off the, the podium, the mic. I got it, I nice. got it. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah, so we're going to be speaking about Samuel. Just to start it off, I wanted to, to touch a little bit more on his youth, his, his younger life. Um, and how, 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 how things came to be, like how God got really in his life, like where did this come from, where, why is he so special, like why does he deserve to be talked about, you know, or like how did God use him? So to start it off, I just wanted to talk about Hannah. Hannah was Samuel's mother, and way back when, Hannah had a really hard time having children, so she prayed and she prayed to God. She said, Lord, please, Lord, I want to have a son. I want to have a child, anything, Lord, please. So she prayed and she prayed. And she made a deal with the Lord saying, Lord, if you give me a child, it's going to be yours. This is going to be a gift from you that I'm giving back to you to use. Like I'm going to bear this child for you, for your works, for, for you to do whatever you please, your will. And... And God answered. He answered and she um, gave birth to Samuel. And so she had left Samuel, um, as, as she promised, like she left Samuel back to God. So she left him at a temple with a prophet or with a priest named Eli, Elijah, or Eli. It was just Eli. So did you want to translate yeah. that? Um, so lo que ella va a hablar es sobre um, Samuel y su joven, juventud. Um, que cuando su madre Hannah estaba orando um, ella no podía tener bebés so ella le estaba orando a Dios um, clamándole diciendo que si le daba un bebé que ella se lo iba a dar a Dios que ella pudiera usarlo como él le placiera que si ella, él le daba el privilegio a tener este bebé él iba a hacer para su obra para le iba a regresar lo que él le había dado hizo so, um, cuando ya, ya había nacido, ella lo dejó al, en el altar y estaba viviendo um, con el profeta Elías. Yeah, and she would visit him. She, she would come to the, to the temple, to the altar, to visit him maybe like once a year. So it was literally Eli, Samuel, God. Like it was all already filled from birth. Literally from his youngest age, he was already dedicated to God, already given to God. Yeah, so um, su mamá lo visitaba cada cuantas veces, pero era siempre Elías, Dios y Samuel. Ellos tres estaban ya ya había una conexión con Dios. And one night when Samuel was sleeping with Eli in their house or I think it was in the temple, but um, when he was sleeping, he heard a voice. Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel got up and he went over to Eli and asked, "Did you call me? I was asleep." Did you call me? And Eli said, no, no, I didn't. You can go back to bed. And this happened, so, so he went back to bed, but this repeatedly happened three times. And he's like, who's calling me? I'm hearing Samuel say, my name, by my name. He's calling me by my name. Who, who else is here? Only Eli's here. But then on that third time, he went back to Eli after he heard Samuel, Samuel. And Eli told him, 
Go and lie down again. And if someone calls again, say, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went back to bed. And after that, in 1 Samuel 3.10, it says, And the Lord came and called as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel replied, Speak, your servant is listening. So those are really powerful words already addressing, because you don't, he wasn't even sure if it was God, but he had faith that, okay, well, if this isn't Eli, it has to be the God. It has to be the one that I can't see, but I know that is real, right? The Where I could feel his presence, that the person is speaking to me. Well, God is speaking to me. And I think it's so cool how we call them by his name, though, because God calls you by your name to do so many things and... And so, yes. Yeah. Um, so, entonces, a una noche estaba dormido Samuel y escuchó que le decían, Samuel, Samuel. Y pues él pensó que era Elías. So, él corrió hacia Elías y le dijo, mándeme, me llamó. Y dijo, no, te puedes regresar a dormir, yo no fui. Y esto pasó tres veces, que le decía Samuel, Samuel. Por su nombre le llamaban Samuel, Samuel. Y él regresaba. Y a la tercera vez le dijo Elías, si escuchas esa voz otra vez, dile, um, dile, habla que tu siervo escucha. So, en el 1 Samuel 3.10 dice, entonces el Señor se acercó, se detuvo y lo llamó de nuevo, Samuel, Samuel. Y él respondió, que um, hable que su siervo escucha, respondió Samuel. So, Ahí Dios lo llamó por su nombre y es interesante que lo, llamó, lo le habló por su nombre Así como Dios nos habla a nosotros por nuestros nombres para hacer cosas para Él so es, like, Para ella era inter, in, interesante que Dios ya lo había, hablado, le, lo había llamado por su nombre Y él no sabía que era Dios Él le, le dijo a Elías que, era, que, si le decía, que si le hablaban que él dijera... Like, Aquí estoy, like, M aquí, que tu siervo te escucha. So, entonces, like, él ya estaba dispuesto para hacer lo que Dios le había llamado que hacer. And an interesting, another point is that Samuel didn't question God. He didn't say, Lord, is that you? Or, or Lord, why me? Why are you talking to me? Like, he didn't ask questions. He just said, all right, use me. Your servant is listening. I'm all ears, God. What are you, what are you saying? I, he was prepared to understand what God was saying already. Um, so, también otra, otro punto interesante es que um, él no cuestionó a Dios. Él le dijo, like, aquí estoy like, para servirte, like, dime qué tengo que hacer. Él no le, le dijo, ¿por qué yo? Like, de todos, ¿por qué a mí? No le dijo, oh, si eres tú Dios, no le preguntó eso. Like, él dijo, eme like, aquí que tu siervo está. Like, él estuvo dispuesto para servirle a Dios. And little did he know, like, that message that was... Because the Lord later gave him a message, but it was for Eli. So already there, like, that's an example of how God spoke through Samuel as a young boy who was trying to sleep, you know, in the middle of the night to spread a message from God to Eli. So that's just one of the ways that I wanted to bring up that how Samuel was used and how you can also be used that way, you know, just by listening to God. Don't question if it's God's voice because you, you're truly going to know if it is his voice because he's, he'll speak to you in a, an intimate way, a special way, well, when you will know. I don't know how else to describe it. Like, you're going to know it's God. You're not going to question it. And if even it's though him, like, you don't know, he's going to try again with you, yeah, just no, like you did. Like for you. Amen. Um, so, también, um, like, continuando con la historia, era que Dios ya le había, ya estaba usando a Samuel para decirle algo a, a Elías. So, ahí podemos ver que Dios ya lo estaba usando desde una pequeña edad. So, si Dios usó a él, también te puede usar a ti. Um, y si tú, como, wait, what was I say? Like, the, I, I already forgot. <laughs> Honestly, I forgot. But anyway, like, Basically, that God can use you if you're just open to being his servant, you know, with anything or the, the different types of communication that God could get to you, like being so intimate with your guys' relationship. Like whatever you and God have, that's how we'll talk to you, that you'll know for you. Yeah, so, um, yeah, it does. So, también dijo que, 
cuando tú formas una conexión con Dios, tú vas a saber que es de Dios. Um, él te puede usar en muchas maneras. Um, no más tienes que tener esa relación con Dios. Um, que es saber, like, cuando Él te habla o Él te manda o te manda señales, tú vas a saber que es de Dios. Tú, like, no, no vas a preguntar, like, ¿es de Dios? Like, no, tú vas a estar seguro que es de Dios y puedes formar esa conexión como Samuel formó esa conexión y fue usado por Dios. Tú también puedes hacer lo mismo. Y aunque estás en el proceso de, de cómo se oye Dios, de, de cómo conectarse, Dios le habló a Samuel tres veces porque todavía no entendió él. Eres, me está llamando, ¿quién es? Yeah, it's like, it, me estás llamando Eli, ¿cómo se dice Eli en español? Elías. Pero Elías ya yes, creo que, se, Eli, creo que dijo, yo no estoy hablando, te está hablando alguien más. Creo que es Dios. Dile, yo soy tu sirviente. Uh, and yeah, like that. That was, that was pretty intense. Yes. Oh, yeah. So, okay. so, yeah, thank you. That was, the, that was like the beginning, you know, and now what we're going to go on to how Samuel was used. Amen. Yeah. Good, 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 uh, good thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I want to continue with like how he was used to, you know, he had a really important connection with God, you know. He was that vessel for God since, like, his mom. Like said that he was gonna give it to him, and he was that. Like he, God gave him the son, and like he was what his mom said that he was gonna be used for him. So I think it's important how like he prophesied to so many people, he anointed so many people, and I just wanted to point out how he anointed the first two kings of um, Israel. Like they didn't have any kings, like they didn't even know what that was. They just had judges, and like they would come to give him advice, and then God gave it to Samuel to anoint these kings and in the Bible it says that they were like one of the best kings there like David he did so much you know he failed we already talked about him like he failed but he was a good leader too like he knew that he would sin and he would like say for like forgive me God and he wouldn't do it ever again like it takes someone special to be a king you know it wasn't anyone and God gave it to Samuel to anoint these people like imagine like like how like connected he was God to anoint a king to yeah the authority that God gave him like because imagine like if if you don't have that connection with God and you anoint someone because you want to like out of your emotions that's not gonna prosper that's gonna be bad like who knows what could have happened you know but God like told Samuel and he followed him like there's so many leaders that it took them like Instead of going this straight path, they had to take curves to get to where God wanted him to, like, wanted them to get and what God wanted them to do. But Samuel, like, he obeyed God. He listened to God's commands, like how you said, without questioning. And I wanted to read 1 Samuel 3.19, and it says, sorry. Um, As Samuel grew, the Lord was with him, and everything Samuel said proved to be reliable. So, you know, Sam. Samuel was walking with God. He he listened to everything that God said. And that's why it says that whatever Samuel did, and, like, it was proved to be right because God was with him. God wasn't going to, like, embarrass him and say, like, never mind. Like, I don't want you to do that after he did it. Like, of course not. Like, God's perfect. And it's just, like, interesting how God used him since he was, like, little. Like, you know, he was already a vessel for God. And just like us, too, like, we, we might not have to be little, you know. We can barely come. But God's going to use us in so many ways that, like, we don't even think. Like, who would have thought? Like, I'm pretty sure Samuel would have never thought he was going to anoint a king or do so much for God, or prophesize, or spread his gospel, like, he would have never thought that, but God already had that in store, like, his mom asked for him, he was a prayer, and, you know, he, he did what he had to do, like, God did what he had to do through Samuel, and that's why, like, he's really known, because he listened to God, he obeyed God. And I sometimes think, because I read the story too, why didn't God make Samuel a king? And... <laughs> The reason that kept coming up was even kings need advice. Yeah. And that's who Samuel was. He was an advisor. And he like kind of was like that person that was like, eh, eh, don't do that. Yeah. And I just, and that's really important in the story of, uh, of Israel. Yeah, it is really important because like, it's the first king, you know. And Saul was like a really wise guy too because God told him like, choose whatever you want i'll give it to you and what did he choose he chose wisdom you know and that's really important because if it was like another king he would have been like well i want 
gold. I want this. I want that. And like, no, he I didn't. Want pots of meat. <laughs> yeah, like, and he didn't like. So God like already told Samuel like which wise guys to choose, which is like really important. Um, so hablando más de Samuel, um, y cómo es un buen líder. Um, él obedecía a Dios, todo lo que Dios le decía, él le obedecía. Um, y un ejemplo de esto es que él ungió a los dos primeros reyes de Israel y que es algo muy importante porque Dios le dijo, ¿quién más le, le hubiera dicho? Porque es importante escoger un, like, los primeros reyes de Israel. Porque si fuera por sus propias emociones, a lo mejor hubiera escogido a un rey incorrecto, pero Dios ya sabía qué reyes iba a escoger. Um, y el ya yeah. mande ya oh, yeah. y uh, so el primer rey era Saul Saul ya yeah. y él era un hombre bien sabio Dios le dijo escoge lo que tú quieras y él escogió sabiduría like, desde ahí podemos ver que Dios ya le había dicho a Samuel quién escoger y escogió a un rey correcto porque él no pidió oro uh, comida like no él escogió sabiduría para poder guiar a su pueblo y luego después ungió a David y David también era un like él tenía sus fallas él no era perfecto él tenía sus fallas pero también like él sabía que cuando él fallaba que le tenía que pedir perdón a Dios y luego nunca hacerlo otra vez a lo mejor hacía otro pecado pero ya nunca era el mismo pecado él, él hacía otro diferente y eso like es ser también un hombre sabio porque imagínate like en la Biblia dice que así como la puerca la va like se regresa al, al, al lodo like nosotros también y y David like Hacía un pecado, pero no hacía el mismo, hacía otro diferente. Si ya se arrepentía, ya era eso. Y eso es like, una enseñanza de like, que era un, un hombre sabio. Y Samuel lo escogió a él. Um, y pues like, ahí podemos mirar que like, tuvo una grande conexión con Dios porque Dios le hacía, le decía qué hacer y no como. Like, hay muchos líderes en la Biblia, todos tienen sus fallas, pero hay líderes que no querían hacer lo que Dios quería, los mandaba a hacer. So ellos tuvieron que tomar un una like, ruta más like, larga porque no obedecían a Dios like, si ellos decían like, no, no quiero hacer eso like, algo pasaba y lo tenían que hacer porque Dios ya los había mandado que hacer y Samuel obedecía like, si Dios le decía, le decía que hiciera algo like, él lo hacía y él no tuvo que tomar esas curvas like, no, like, él no más obedecía a Dios o él tenía esa conexión con Dios Amen. Yeah, his path was true. I want to add on to that. Number one first is Victoria's, like she said, and like how you just said right now, how you have to listen to God or like he, uh, it has been said in the book, I forgot which one it is, the fish one where um, uh, Joe maybe or someone kept disobeying God and doing the opposite of what he said and he ended up getting swallowed by the Jonah. Yeah, that's what it was. He gets... <laughs> I was thinking of Peter, Job, I don't know. And uh, he gets swallowed by the fish and, you know, he just kept disobeying God. And the people around him saw all this treacherous act of, like, the rainstorm and thunderstorm coming around. So if you're, like, like she said, it's obvious when God is calling to you and you know when God is calling to you. And, and if you don't obey to his command, it's it's not going to be nice. It's, it's going to hurt. And then on the next one for her, see if I remember <clears throat> Uh, Spanish, please. <laughs> um, estaba hablando de, de líderes grandes en la Biblia y, y Samuel era uno, lo mismo como que van en círculos cuando no obedecen, uh, como en la historia de, de Joná, Jonás, um, que, lo, que, se lo, que lo agarra un pescado y lo regresa para atrás porque él no hizo caso y se fue en la otra dirección de, en vez de la dirección donde quería que Dios ir y hacer algo. Y eso pasa con muchos de los líderes en la Biblia que en veces no quieren hacer algo, pero cuando Dios dice algo se va a cumplir, aunque quieran o no. Y, y es más mejor trabajar en las cosas de Dios en vez de esperar de circular otra vez y, y hacer otros, um, otros um, errores. Thank you, thank you. My second point that I did not forget. Um, so, as she said, he asked for wisdom, right? I think wisdom is like the one most important thing to me. But in today's day, you see a lot of people asking me, they're just straight up for money, not know how to do stuff. They just want, hey, 
do this for me. Get it out of the way. It's too much for me. Y el segundo punto que dijo uh, Julius era hablando de, de Saúl que pidió por sabiduría. Si le preguntas a alguien hoy qué vas a querer, si es lo que lo que ellos quieran, eh, muchos no van a pedir por sabiduría. No van a pedir por eso porque no saben todo lo que viene con sabiduría. Porque dinero, uh, trabajo, todo eso viene con sabiduría. Pero ahorita gente va a pedir por dinero, carros, cosas material que de veras que no te ayudan. And there's a famous saying with that, give a man a fish and he eats for a day, teach a man a fish and he eats for life. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot longer and a lot better. Y hay una enseñanza que le, le enseñas a un hombre cómo pescar en vez de darle un pescado y él puede agarrar su comida todo el tiempo en vez de tú ayudarle con un pescado cada día. I don't know if I said that right, but it felt good. You know, <laughs> the words were there. Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, but with that, I'm going to go ahead and jump into my part. I will be mainly talking about Samuel, First Samuel 7, that whole chapter. Uh, don't worry about showing the whole chapter to you. It's just one verse I'll talk about later. But... In general, the Israel, they turned back to God and to uh, Samuel. And so uh, Samuel told them, hey, you know, forget all your other gods, you know. Get back to worshiping our God. Show your love and make it meaningful. Y uh, voy a estar hablando de 1 Samuel. Y lo que estaba hablando en este um, capítulo era que Samuel les decía a la gente que no anden alabando a otros dioses. Deja eso, ya déjalo. Ven y adora a nuestro Dios. He told them to uh, go assemble and misbah, however you say that. And then um, they assembled there, you know, and as they assembled there, the Philistines learned about them, you know, the enemy of God, the ones that want to destroy all the Israelites. And they're charging over there. And Israel see them and coming, they go run to Samuel saying, hey, please, please help us. Y estaba hablando de cuando Samuel les dijo que reúnen a todos, a todo Israel en, en Mizpa um, y todos corrieron porque querían hacer parte de, de ayudar ahí. And so Samuel, he, uh, he does a quick offering and he makes miracle happen. So this verse says, y Samuel hace un um, how do you say offering? Una ofrenda y, y pasa un milagro. So in 1 Samuel 10, or 1 Samuel 7:10, it says, While Samuel was sacrificing the burnt offering, the Philistine drew near to engage Israel in battle. But that day the Lord thundered with loud thunder against the Philistines and threw them in such a panic that they were routed before the Israelites. Y 1 Samuel 7, 10 dice, y aconteció, que mi, a, y aconteció que mientras Samuel sacrificaba el holocausto, holocausto, los filisteos llegaron para pelear con los hijos de Israel, mas Jehová trono aquel día con gran estrés truendo sobre los filisteos y los atemoriz y los atemorizo y fueron vencidos delante de Israel. And so as they were fleeing and trying to get away, you know, they're all struck and immobilized. They don't know what's going on. Israelites went and attacked them and, you know, killed all of the uh, God's um, enemies. Y cuando ellos estaban tratando de escapar, escapar, um, no podían moverse como que estaban paralizados casi y en ese tiempo vino los hijos de Dios de, de Israel y pues los, le, vencieron al enemigo a todos. And what I want to say about this is how Samuel is, you know, he kept telling them about God and you know everyone needed to listen to him and they finally did and he was able to be in between, you know, men and God to be the communicator because of how wonderful he is, how beautiful and how great connection he has with the Lord. Y lo que quería hablar aquí es que Samuel era parte de eso, era parte de la comunicación de, de la guerra y con Dios y agarraron la victoria porque Samuel les hablaba de Dios y les da, hablaba de lo que necesitaban y como Dios ayuda. 
he was like a general. He was a man that everyone looked up to. And they were like, hey, we're in trouble. Help me. This is the time. Show us what you got. Y era como un general en la, en, en la guerra. Y gente miraba para él para, para como, ¿qué vamos a hacer? Que estamos en peligro, ¿qué vamos a hacer? Y él les ayudaba, él hablaba con Dios. And he got it, he made a burnt offering, he told God, you know, help us and solve this issue. And right then and there, as soon as he burnt the offering, everything, all the thunder came down. Y rapidito, ahí como um, él dio una ofrenda, um, algo pasó, un, un milagro pasó y bajó todos los rayos de, de luz um, y agarraron la victoria. So I, I just want to mention just his leadership capability. That's something that I interest me a lot about Samuel, about you know his wisdom that lead him to have a great leadership, to be able to lead everyone else to safety and to give them what they need. Y algo que me que me interesó mucho de Samuel uh, fue el liderazgo que él tenía. Él era un gran líder um, y él él atrás de Dios podía hacer muchas cosas. Thank Amen. That's the grace. That's this. That's the grace of God that that was on Samuel, like to have with the people, so they looked up to him as a leader. You know, that's awesome. I love that you said. All this era la gracia de Dios um, adentro de Samuel, y así era gran líder por Dios en su vida y las acciones que él podía hacer. All right, talking about leader. Thank you for the handoff. Um, I think Samuel is a really big leader, somebody that we can look up to even nowadays. Um, you know, everything from when he was a child, he was chosen. And a lot of people out there are chosen from, from, from being a child, and they just don't know it. They just keep hearing Eli's voice, right? Eli? They keep thinking it's Eli. No, they, they keep think thinking it's Eli. Eli, and it's God's voice talking to them, even from an early age. And I'm telling you that it's true because God is still alive as he was back then till now. And the thing about Samuel is a lot of things. But my favorite was he's a great leader. He's such a big leader that like God used him through him to make, you know, miracles, to get, to gain the victory, you know, to to go out and get these these souls that didn't quite understand and Honestly, through the life of Samuel, I think a lot of people came to Christ. I think uh, like armies, uh, you know, kids, women, children, a lot of them came to Christ. And he, he just showed his, his direct connection to God daily. He showed his connection to God daily. He, he always talked about how he was empowered by God, nothing else, that he was empowered by God and that you know, through him, he would make his decisions because clearly he taught himself to not make any decisions without God. And I think that's one of the one of the biggest things that's affecting me right now um, that like I'm learning to trust God fully. And I know people say that, um, but I'm going through hardships right now. And like, I do not feel no rocks in the boat. You know, if you were to look at my life from the outside, you would be like, oh, that guy's struggling. I'm not struggling. Like, life is good. And I'm learning to try to just connect with God and do what Saul did and, you know, call on his name and pray um, and just just rely rely on the Lord 100%. Oh. <laughs> rely on the Lord 100%. And I like that um, he taught other people how to connect. And that's something that being a leader, um, you know, that's a big deal. When you're a leader, a lot of people look up to you, not just for advice, but they're like, I want to know how you connect with God. I want to know how, how are you doing your thing? And Saul would, I think he would even um, speak to, I think it was him that spoke to younger kids in the, in the church uh, with Eli. Um, and I want to talk about the scripture, 1 Samuel 15, 22. And in this scripture, you're really going to know who Samuel is and what kind of a leader he is. Samuel replied, does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice. And to heed is better than the fat of rams. 
And what what this scripture is kind of random, I know, but he is basically telling the king, the king, he's telling Saul, like, you're, you messed up. And Saul is like, I didn't mess up. I followed the Lord's instructions. And, you know, I, I gave my offerings and I gave my sacrifices, but he didn't fully obey every detail. And it was very key at the time that God told him to destroy everything. And they kept things. His army kept things. And, you know, Saul let him get it. Um, Samuel let him get away with it. And he says it right here. Does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as obeying the Lord? And I feel like that's where a lot of us fall um, because we're like, oh, no, I'm giving my tithes. You know, I'm not like cutting people off in traffic like I used to before. I'm not yelling at my neighbor anymore. I'm, you know, helping when I absolutely have to. And they call me like three times. But it's different from you obeying the Lord without somebody have to remind you. It's different from when you're in your own mind and you know right from wrong and you're choosing wrong. You're choosing sin because sin and and pride go together. And that's one thing that you have to learn to get away from your pride because pride goes before you fall before you fall pride is in the way and i just think that if we're a little bit more like samuel you know and we are obedient as samuel because samuel was an obedient person like to the t and he taught others how to be obedient you will see that like the evidence of having a relationship with god is your salvation and I feel like he knew that at such an early age that his salvation was more important than anything else. And, you know, obeying God is one of the best ways to, to get your salvation, to protect it, to make sure that you make it to the, the end of the good uh, race. And, you know, others, they're going to struggle with that. They're going to struggle with God in general. Because why? Because they're not obedient. They're not obedient like Samuel. And, you know, like I said before, pride and sin always go together um, because pride is not from god pride is not from god that's like oh you know he disgraced your name fight him till the end um god's a sovereign god and he does things his way and i just believe that samuel was anointed by god at such an early age to help not only people to help not only soldiers win wars but kings kings lead a nation the nation of israel against other nations and be in victory always Um, I'm going to read this in Spanish real quick. I'll try to go fast. Uh, voy a hablar de, de Samuel, 1 Samuel 15, 22. Y Samuel dijo, Si complace Jehová tanto a los holocaustos y, holocaustos y víctimas como en que se obedezca a las palabras de Jehová, cierta, ciertamente él obedecerá es mejor que los sacrificios y prestar atención que la grosura de los carneros. Ay, perdón. Y lo que quería hablar de esto es que um, Dios, Dios le dio una conexión grande, tenía una conexión grande con Samuel y con, por esa conexión él podía salvar mucha gente a uh, enseñar, a ser un líder y ayudarle a comunicar, comunicarse con Dios. Um, y con, desde una edad chica, él sabía y él hablaba, escuchaba de Dios, como dijo Victoria, hasta le llamó tres veces directamente. Y también como dijo Alfredo, Dios le dio la victoria porque él daba ofrenda, él sabía cómo comunicarse con Dios y hasta le ayudó a ganar una guerra a Israel. Y no nada más eso, él ayudaba a los, a los reyes, los reyes que tenían preguntas, los reyes que, que, que gobernaban una nación y estaban encargados de todos. Ellos iban a Samuel para su dirección, para ayuda, para comunicarse ellos con Dios porque una, unas gentes no tenían tan uh, comunicación tan grande y por eso Samuel era bien um, importante para mí para hablar de que la comunicación que tenía eh, eh, nada más era algo tan lindo que si la teníamos ahorita no teníamos muchos problemas porque sabíamos que estaríamos 
cuidados, protegidos, amados y que el enemigo no nos podía tocar. All right, guys, we're running out of time. Uh, I feel like my mouth was just like a machine gun right now. That's good. That's good. That's good words. Uh, guys, Samuel was a great, great leader. If you don't know about him, read your Bible. Samuel era un líder tan grande. Um, si no saben de él, leen su Biblia. Hay dos capítulos de él, pero está más en, a veces en la Biblia. Pero lean esos dos para que sepan el gran líder que era um, Samuel y cómo Dios lo usó. Yeah, guys, so we encourage you guys to just dive deep into your word, you know. If you want to get to know Samuel more, you know, um, you can you can see that in the New Test, no, in the Old Testament of First and Second Samuel. So, yeah, we encourage you guys. And, and yeah, so, again, we invite you guys, right, to En Fuego to come worship with us, come sing with us, come listen to the word of God with us, you know, in that environment, and um, to also come and feel God's holy presence on Friday at 7 p.m., and then the address, Raul. We have it, come to 4302 East Broadway Road, Phoenix, Arizona, 85040. Awesome, at 7. Vengan mañana, mañana vamos a tener el servicio, todo va a estar... Al 100, ahí va a estar nosotros, ahí va a estar la presencia de Dios, ahí va a estar el grupo de, de música alabando. Yes. So vengan, los invitamos. Um, guys, we're gonna, we're, we're gonna close off because we only got three minutes. So let's go ahead and pray. Yeah. Yeah. Dear Heavenly Father, we first want to thank you for giving us this opportunity to come and speak your word, Lord, to teach the people who are listening or watching something new lord to encourage them to be more like samuel to have the connection with you lord it starts with the simple prayer or with them reading their bible lord give them the courage to do that lord um we ask you that they may also come and join us tomorrow um we're going to have a beautiful service to come serve you thank you for all the things you've done in our lives lord for helping us through the week lord so we encourage those who are watching to come join us in person and if they can't to watch us on facebook or instagram or youtube lord but we ask that they may seek more of you that they may want more of you lord we ask that you continue to bless each and every one of us who are here lord um that you continue to fill us up lord to, so we can speak more about you lord we ask that you may help us get home safe lord um to help us you know get through tomorrow lord if it's your will Um, so that we may come and serve you. Um, and thank you for all that you've done, Lord. We ask you all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Woo! We'll see you tomorrow at yes. Fuego. Yes, guys, come on, be there. Don't be shy. Guys, We're all there. Yes. There's going to be new people tomorrow. Get excited. Praise God. Get excited. I declare new people tomorrow. Amen. You guys are going to show up. You're going to have a great time. Uh, you're going to meet a lot of people, but most importantly, you're going to get closer to God. Yes. See you there. Be there, guys. Tomorrow. Yes. I say flowers dressed in blue, painted pink skies proof enough it's